How much can one man take? That's a question that I ask myself every time I, I see somebody blatantly disrespecting Lamar Jackson. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with criticizing Lamar Jackson. There's nothing wrong with talking about flaws that are in his game. Because, again, he is not a perfect quarterback. But a lot of people, they go way beyond just criticism. They, they go way beyond just critiquing his game because so much of what you see when it comes to one Lamar Jackson is just flat out hate. And it is so obvious. The Athletic, Mike Sando, um, he composed an article. And, and I know you all have seen the quote by now, but he composed an article where it says it's a new era for quarterback tiers as 50 NFL coaches and executives have shaken up the elite ranks for 2022, the ninth incarnation of my annual survey. So basically, this is a survey that is going through a lot of the quarterbacks in the league, putting them in different tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three, obviously tier one being the best of the best and so on and so forth. But there's been a quote that has been going around and y'all know again when it comes to quotes you can look at a quote and be like oof yikes or you can look at a quote and be like oh nice all depending on what the quote says but it's very important to always get context even though with that quote with this quote that we about to go over it really didn't need any context but let's talk about it so we're going straight to the section that talked about lamar jackson they have him listed at Number 10, so let's read the entirety of the section on Ravens star quarterback. It says, Lamar Jackson climbed slightly in terms of average vote, but dropped three places in the rankings as Stafford, Herbert, and Burrow moved past him. There remains no player like him in the league. So that's subjective. Whoever you, whoever you want to put Lamar in terms of top quarterbacks, we're not here to talk about that, but let's keep moving. So here we go. One quote said, you cannot go into a game and not account for this guy. Like, we are meeting with people every offseason to find out how they would defend this type of offense, a defensive coordinator said. At the, time, at the same time, I can totally see why you can go anywhere from one to three on him. Uh, if he has to drop back and throw the ball, it is not the same. But if he is on rhythm and they are running the ball and they are running the play action off it, if you can't account for that dude, he is going to kill you. So that's when the, the slight disrespect, if, if they threw it in there, if, if you didn't pay attention, you might not have caught it because it said, again, let's run it back. All right. We're meeting with people every offseason to find out how they would defend this type of offense. At the same time, I can totally see why you can go anywhere from one to three on him as far as the tiers. Uh, if he has to drop back and throw the ball, it is not the same. So, I don't know where this comes from. I don't know why people are still running with it, saying that Lamar Jackson can't drop back and throw the ball. <laughs> anyway, um, so they, they're saying that he only thrives if... The Ravens are running the ball and they're running the play action off of it. This couldn't be further from the truth. We've seen it a lot of times when the Ravens, they're not running the ball particularly well. But Lamar Jackson still goes out there and, and does his thing. We saw it a lot last year, too. But this could also be said about a lot of quarterbacks. If a team is one-dimensional, if you're going against an offense and they're one-dimensional, if they can't run the ball... That makes it easier to defend any quarterback. But, but, but no, 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 because it's Lamar Jackson. No, 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 no. It, this only applies to him, of course. Anyway, moving on. Says, Jackson was so sensational as a dual threat during his 2019 MVP season that 16 voters placed him in Tier 1 heading into 2020. This year, 
there were as many votes for Jackson in tier one, eight as there were in tier three. So eight people voted for him to be in the tier one of uh, quarterbacks and eight people also voted for him to be in the tier three of quarterbacks. All right. So here we go. If he this is the infamous quote that everybody's been. Let's get into it. If he has to pass to win the game, they ain't winning the game. Another defensive coordinator said so. <laughs> No, everybody loves to bring up the, the Colts game because that was a crazy game. And Lamar Jackson, he was passing like crazy. The Ravens won the game. Ravens were down multiple scores. They came back. They won the game. <sighs> just, why are we continuing this? Lamar Jackson has wins where he has had to pass the ball. A lot. He's had wins where he hasn't had to pass the ball much. He, he's had multiple touchdown, five touchdown games, four touchdown, three touchdown games. He's had games where the run game is taking off. He's had games where the run game ain't been so pretty, but he still had to throw the ball, and they've won. He's won with throwing from ahead. He's won with throwing from behind. I hate that I have to always go back to 2018, but I said it back then and I said it in 2019 as well. And I will continue to say it because the same thing remains true. Nothing that Lamar Jackson does will ever be good enough. Lamar Jackson, any, again, and I said this in another video. There are people that have a Lamar Jackson prove it list. All right, I'll give Lamar Jackson credit if he does this, 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 and this. And he could do this, 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 and this, and more. And instead of them crossing out, all right, he did that, he did that, he did that, he did that, he did that. They'll erase it and write something new. And what the, one of the craziest parts about it, they won't just erase it and write something new. They'll erase it and write something that he's already proven he can do. But they'll still write it on their to-do list like he hasn't accomplished it already or like he's incapable of doing it. But let's get back to this silly quote. If he has to pass to win the game, they ain't winning the game. Another defensive coordinator said, he's so unique as an athlete and he's really a good football player. But I don't care if he wins the league MVP 12 times. I don't think he'll ever be a one tier one is speaking of I don't think he'll ever be a tier one as a quarterback he'll be a tier one as a football player but not as a quarterback so many games come down to two minutes and that is why they have a hard time advancing even when they are good on defense playoffs are tight you have to be able to throw the ball and he is just so inconsistent throwing the ball it is hit or miss wow that was a lot that was a lot and um i've seen i've seen a lot of people say oh that, that gotta be jack del rio then i've seen some other people say oh that's probably vic Van, vic fangio uh then i did see one person say oh that, that's probably wink more in there but anyway um roger sherman i don't know who roger sherman is but he brought out a very interesting stat um i didn't know about this stat i mean i've seen it but I didn't know, I didn't, the numbers weren't in my head. But I've seen it from watching Lamar Jackson play. But anyway, it says, in games with less than five minutes to go in the fourth quarter and trailing. So being down the last three seasons. So that's the scenario. In regular season games with five minutes less to go in the fourth quarter and being down, scores, being, being, trailing in the last three seasons. So 2021, uh, 2020, and 2019. He said, unstoppable comeback guy Patrick Mahomes went 39 for 62, 509 yards, 62.9 completion percentage, and 8.2 yards per attempt. Four touchdowns to one interception, a 110.2 QB rating. So that's nice. That's nice. And again, that's in the, the last five minutes, when there's five minutes or less left in the game, fourth quarter, and trailing. In the last three seasons. So, okay. But Lamar Jackson, who can't pass to win the game. Lamar Jackson, 
In that same time period, he's went 41 out of 64, 574 yards, 64.1 completion percentage, 9.9 yards per yards, 9 yards per attempt, can't even talk. Five touchdowns to one interception and a 112.4 quarterback rating. So, in crunch time and clutch time, he's been clutch. And even, I mean, the numbers are even better than Patrick Mahomes, who a lot, a lot of people would say is clutch as well. Um, but a lot of people will praise Patrick Mahomes, who is nice. He's amazing. But they'll say Lamar Jackson can't do it. <sighs> All right, back to uh, the article. Um, the way that I feel about these quotes if you're going to say something like this, if you're going to be big and bold and bad and with your chest out, put your name on it. Put your name on it. If you're willing to be this loud and this wrong, at least own up to it. Own up to it. Fess up. Because there's a lot of people that have said this and that and the third about Lamar Jackson. There's a lot of people that have been wrong about this, that, and the third when it comes to Lamar Jackson. But a lot of people have put their name on it. A lot of people haven't as well. But a lot of people have put their name on it. I, I, I really wish this person would have. Just, just so we know who it is. Because we don't have the full context. I, in my personal opinion, I, I think this is somebody who Lamar probably made him very frustrated as a defensive coordinator before. I, I, th I would think that this would be somebody who Lamar just really had them heated at their game plan and Lamar just shredded their defense in more ways than one. But hey, since they ain't put no name on it, we'll never know. Back to the article. It says the Ravens are 1-3 in the postseason with Lamar Jackson starting. Lamar Jackson has averaged 6.6 .6 yards per attempt with four total touchdowns and seven turnovers in those games. During the same span, the players in Tier 1 this season are 24-12 and 12 in the playoffs while averaging 7.7 .7 yards per attempt with 79 total touchdowns and 24 turnovers. Their combined playoff passer rating is 99.7 compared to 68.3 for Jackson. <laughs> this is like, we know... Lamar Jackson in the playoffs, and again, context is important. We know there's been some struggles, but again, one and three in the playoffs. That's what gets highlighted all the time. I know. I get it. First playoff game. There are no excuses, but th this is just what it is. First playoff game was his rookie season. <laughs> the Ravens had just played the Chargers two weeks prior. That was the talk of the town. Oh, man, the Ravens, the Chargers coming into town. Ravens just played them two weeks ago. This rookie Lamar Jackson. Oh, he did his thing against the Chargers. Da -da -da -da. Okay, cool. Ravens played them two weeks prior. They ran the same offense that they were running two weeks ago. The offense wasn't working in the first quarter. They still kept running it. Second quarter, they still kept running it. Third quarter, they still kept running it. Beginning of the fourth quarter, they still kept running it. Then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, you know what? In the middle of the fourth quarter, let's change it. Guess what happened? They start moving the ball and they start scoring. <laughs> oh, by golly, wow, geez, man, that's amazing. And it, it was just so frustrating. And I, I, I remember being there, watching it like, oh, just just didn't get it. Following year, MVP season, we know. Face the Titans at the crib, at home. Um, Drop after 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 drop. So many people, they, they, they praise Lamar Jackson for, oh man, he won an MVP with that at wide receiver? Man, and, and, and this is why I get so frustrated with a lot of Ravens fans who continue to bring that up. Oh, look what he did with this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, wide receiver in 2019 when he won his MVP season. All we need to do is upgrade the offensive line and we'll be straight. But look what happened in the playoffs with those same wide receivers in his MVP season. It was not pretty. Hollywood did his thing there. Hollywood stepped up. But everybody else, it, it was nasty. It was really, really nasty. So this is why I continue to advocate for the Baltimore Ravens to provide Lamar Jackson with significant weapons. It's not a shot at the guys that are already there now. But why not give him more? Why not give him even better than what he's had? Why not give him the best you could possibly give him? Another conversation, though. Following year, Tennessee Titans game. Ooh, it's a struggle. They were struggling early on. Um, Lamar, he was a little off early on in that game. Um, 
And then there was an interception. I think was that the pass to Miles Boykin? I think that was one of Miles Boykin. I don't know if the wind took it or what. I don't even remember. And I think Miles Boykin he might have timed it a little bit wrong too, because it's just it's just an ugly. It's just ugly. But then Lamar was like, "Hold up, man! I, I, I got to take this thing over." He started taking it over, and the Ravens won. He broke off that. What was that? A fifty-nine yard run? I don't remember how long that run was. It was super long though, but. He broke that runoff for a touchdown, and there was a, there was some clutch throws in that game. I remember one; I think it was on third down, and it's one of Lamar Jackson's specialties. Y'all know when he does it when he he snaps the ball, he's looking, he's looking. <laughs> of course, the pocket breaks down because <laughs> you know he don't be having no protection. But nobody talks about that. But anyway, um, that broke down. He he was scrambling, looking, 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 scrambling, looking, looking, and nobody talks about when he always does that because he always does that. He always if the pocket breaks, well, when the pocket breaks down because it breaks down a lot. He has to scramble, and he's always looking downfield. But they want to call him a run-first quarterback. But anyway, he was scrambling, scrambling to his right, to his right, to his right, looking, 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 scrambling to his right, waiting, 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 waiting. Last second. And I think he he hit uh, Mark Andrews on the sideline. Or was it Hayden Hurst? I forget which one it was. I think it was Mark Andrews, though. But anyway, he hits tight end on the sideline. Big, big third down play. Huge third down play. And that was a game changer. Uh, but anyway, the Ravens were down multiple scores in that game. In a playoff game, too. Playoff atmosphere, playoff game. Oh, Ravens down multiple scores. Oh, you know they can't come back and win. They came back and won. Bills game. Oof. Bills game. They just were not moving that ball. Shout out to Bills defensive line. Bills defensive line was like, y'all are not running the ball on us. Y'all ain't moving us. We're going to move y'all. Um, Ravens are struggling. That interception. Uh... Oof. I mean, offensive line, they, they weren't blocking. He did, I think, somebody on the, on the play before that pick six that he threw. Was it Tapoya or Hyde? I forgot which one caught it and took it back for six. But the play before, they had a touchdown. Um, and I was that what the offensive line just didn't block? Something happened on the play. I forgot what happened. But it was obviously not a touchdown. They had a touchdown, but it was not a touchdown. Um, then he threw that pick six. Bad throw. But they were still in it. They were still in it. But then Patrick McCarry was like, nope, we are not about to be in this thing anymore because we I'm going to take out our quarterback. So then Patrick McCarry with that high snap, it's like, whoa, <laughs> Where, where's that ball going? Uh, and you know the rest of the story when it came to the concussion. But anyway, um, the way that they put these stats, it reminds me of Avengers. Uh, because it's like all the, the the tier one quarterbacks that they're talking about, it's like they're the Avengers and Lamar Jackson is Thanos. Because, again, they put in Lamar Jackson's one person, one player. Uh, and I understand what they're doing. They're just putting all the averages of those guys. But they're putting all those guys together, all their numbers together against the one Lamar Jackson. But it, it, it's cool. Anyway, uh, next paragraph. It said, I think what we saw with Lamar. Starting with the Miami game and carrying through the rest of the season was someone who struggled to identify coverages and make pre-snap reads, an offensive coach said. This is somebody else. So he is still a really dynamic player, brings something different to the group, but by and large is going to have to continue to improve as a passer in order to go deep in the playoffs and put himself in the tier one group. Huh. Lamar Jackson um, as a passer. It's like that that narrative, it seems like it's never going to go away, that he needs to improve as a passer. It's like there's, there's never a narrative or there's rarely a narrative. The Ravens should really uh, invest and improve what they put around Lamar Jackson, especially at the wide receiver position, to really get the most out of him. That's, that's a narrative that you don't hear too often. But you always hear the one about Lamar Jackson needing to improve as a passer. You look at last year, um, con that's how context is so important. Um, Lamar Jackson, there were a lot of yards that Lamar Jackson threw that weren't caught. Hollywood, he had some drops. Sammy Watkins just had some misses. I remember one of my guys put that, that Dolphins game that, where Sammy Watkins just stopped running. Lamar threw him a touchdown. It's a good pass. Back of the end zone, Sammy Watkins, uh, I ain't running for that no more. And it just, it, just, it just hurt to see that stuff. There, there were a lot of points, a lot of yards left on the field, even just last year alone. Now, is Lamar perfect? No. Lamar had some misses. He had some interceptions. He had some drugs. <laughs> so, 
He has some bad throws. He has all of that stuff. But every quarterback has that stuff. But with Lamar Jackson, it gets highlighted like crazy to an extreme. To an extreme. And y'all know that. Y'all see it all the time. Y- y'all see quotes like the ones that we, we read in this article. And most people aren't even surprised by it. Because people are just openly hating this dude for whatever reason. I, I don't know how he does it. I-, I commend him like crazy because the fact that a lot of times he just stays silent. And it's like with Lamar Jackson, it's t- he's in such a tough position. Because people, they talk crazy about him. Like in this article, they talk reckless about him. Some people put their name on it. A lot of people don't. But anyway, they talk crazy about him. And he just sits back and remains quiet. But then when he speaks about it, when he addresses it, he's a bad guy. When he calls it out, he's immature. When he talks about it, oh, that's not a real franchise quarterback. When he goes back at those people, oh, man, he's unsure of himself. It's like it's a lose-lose. It is a lose-lose. So that makes him, that that puts him in such a tough position to be in. And I just, I I, I commend him for having to deal every single day, literally every single day. Todos los días. Every single day. He's somebody, somebody talking about every day, every day. I, I, I don't know how he does it. Anyway, um, it says those placing Lamar Jackson in tier one uh, think his skill set is unique enough to warrant that status. To me, it is nonsense to say he is not in tier one. Another offensive coach said he is one of the more special talents to ever play the game. And Baltimore is a contender because of him. And that's true. Um, no Lamar Jackson, no Ravens being contenders. Straight up. Everybody knows that. Whether you, love, whether you like Lamar Jackson or not. And, and I, I've seen somebody, I've seen people argue the whole Tyler Huntley thing. Oh, the Ravens could let Lamar Jackson walk in. Have Tyler Huntley run the show because of how he did last year. Tyler Huntley went, what, 1-5? In, in Lamar Jackson's absence? He won the Bears game. But other than that, he didn't win at all. He did not win at all. Some games he played good. Other games was like, uh, and he was close. He was close, but being close is not good enough. And I do think Tyler Huntley with preparation and proper investment, I think he could start in the NFL for sure. I really do. Um, But that whole argument about Tyler Huntley, uh, him replacing Lamar Jackson for the Ravens, no. That's, no, no. But anyway, um, this is articles like this, quotes like that, comments like that. It's going to continue. It's never going to go away. So just got to be used to it because people will continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. And it's just it's weird. It's very weird. Um, I understand if, if people are going to. Break down film and be like, oh, no, Lamar Jackson, he need to do a better job of this. He need to do a better job of that. Da, 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 da. But stuff like that, that's not criticizing. Stuff like that, it's not breaking down the way that he plays. Stuff like that is just pure hate and it's obvious. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.